Let's take you from that straight across to Walthamstow, where Tessa Jowell is speaking. This is where Labour are laying out the themes of their manifesto, which is going to be launched in detail tomorrow. Let's have a little listen to what she's saying. Then it is the Olympics. And what we see just down the road from here in the Olympic Park is truly astonishing. Um, a bit of brownfield wasteland, which as a result of public investment, uh, we're seeing 75p in every pound working to regenerate that, not just for the Olympic Games, but for years afterwards. A park that will become a cultural, a commercial and a sporting centre for, uh, for uh, this part of London, for East London, but also for the whole city. And I think that, uh, I mean, this is campaigning is, is tough, it's very hard work, but when you know the prize is worth it, it's easy. That's how I think a lot of our young Olympic athletes feel now as they pitch themselves towards London 2012. We've got only another four weeks to go, but we'll give it an Olympic effort to make sure that we see both Stella and John Cryer returned as Labour members for uh, the, the constituencies in Waltham Forest and that we see Chris leading a magnificent army of new Labour councillors to make sure that um, Waltham Forest holds its head high as we move towards the Olympics and beyond. Just finally, I uh, was uh, just door knocking and uh, the other day and I was talking to um, a man in my own constituency who uh, was, you know, he doesn't support everything that the government's done over the last 13 years. But he said, you know, what people like me have to uh, have to decide is what kind of country we want. Uh, and what kind of country we want to be part of over the next five years. He was so eloquent. He said, that's what we're voting for. And what I know is that I want to be part of a Labour country, a Labour country that brings people together, that recognises and nurtures and develops talent, and a Labour country where young people really do have the prospect of doing better than their parents. So a country of ambition and a city, a city that is so proud of its diversity and its tolerance, a city that we want to see returned as a Labour city. So it's a big challenge that lies ahead, but just remember what we're campaigning for is the kind of country and the kind of city that only Labour really understands and really represents. And with that, to set out uh, a little bit more how we're going to do that, uh, I'd like to introduce my very dear friend, uh, Ed Miliband. He and I sit next to each other in Cabinet, so we get plenty of back, uh, backdoor gossip, don't we, Ed? Um, but Ed has coordinated the manifesto, which has probably been the biggest exercise ever in involvement in developing the manifesto by our party, so we know that after we launch it tomorrow, we can all step forward um, in step one with the other, because this, this is something, a vision that belongs to all of us, and it's all our job to communicate it to the British people. So, Ed, thank you very much indeed, and I think everyone is just waiting to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much. Tessa, thank you very much. And can I say what a pleasure it is uh, to be here with you and uh, what a fantastic uh, job you have done bringing the Olympics to Britain and then masterminding uh, the work that is being done on the Olympics. I think one of the first Olympic Games that is not just on schedule but ahead of schedule, and that is due to your leadership that you've shown uh, in relation to the Olympics. So thank you. Uh, and it is also a fantastic pleasure to be here with my very good friend Stella Creasy, and she will be a fantastic Member of Parliament for Walthamstow after the general election on May the 6th, and I think deserves a big round of applause for her here. Uh, here. Now, now, I'm delighted to be uh, here today, and I thought the best thing to do the day before our manifesto launch was to give Walthamstow a sneak preview uh, of it. Um, and when Stella made the invitation to me, I thought it was an invitation I couldn't uh, refuse. This manifesto, as Tessa has said, is based on thousands 
tens of thousands of conversations up and down the country with business people, with Labour Party members, with members of the public, with a whole range uh, of people. And it is a, a manifesto crafted uh, over the last uh, 12 months or so in those conversations. And above all, it is a manifesto for the future because we know that business as usual won't do. Business as usual won't do in relation to our economy, business as usual won't do in relation to our public services, and business as usual won't do in relation to our politics either. And the reason why business as usual won't do is because of the two crises that we've seen that have taken pl place in the last couple of years. The global economic crisis came from the United States, but had huge effects in this country, and the political crisis caused by expenses. And the test of not just our manifesto, but of other manifestos in this campaign, is can you rise to the challenge uh, of those crises and responding to those crises? Now, we here in Walthamstow and around the country are proud of what we've done as a government. Proud of tax credits, proud of Sure Start, proud of investment in schools, proud of investment in hospitals, proud of all those things that have happened. But we know that we are running for the future. And that is what politics is about. And that is particularly what politics is about in this campaign. So our manifesto is built around three mandates that we seek. The mandate to rebuild and renew our economy. A mandate to strengthen our public services and strengthen society as we cut the deficit. And thirdly, a mandate to renew our politics. And I want to talk to you today about each of those mandates that we seek uh, at this general election and in our manifesto. First, let, let's start by talking about the economy. We know from the financial crisis that we as an economy became too dependent on financial services. We know that the economies of the future that will succeed are those that are built on a wider industrial base. We're the sixth biggest manufacturing economy in the world already, but we know there is a lot more that we can do, a lot more we can build in terms of those future industries. That will make us stronger uh, as an economy in the future. And the exciting thing for Britain is that we are starting to see, for example, the green industries of the future come to this country. They're building, they're going to build electric cars in Sunderland. Nissan are going to build electric cars in Sunderland. Four of the biggest five, uh, five biggest uh, offshore wind manufacturers are saying they're going, going to come to Britain. But it needs our insight that government needs to back business in order to get more of those jobs in this country. That's why in our manifesto we will commit to a green investment bank, to invest in those green industries of the future, to make those future jobs happen in this country. And that's why it'll be a pro-business manifesto. A pro-business manifesto because we will back business and enterprise to create those jobs of the future. So we need to build our economy on, on stronger and firmer foundations. But we also know we need to build our economy on fairer foundations as well. And this will be a manifesto for the aspirations of people throughout this country. Those who want to own a home. So we'll cut stamp duty for first-time buyers. Those who are the low paid in this country, so we're going to raise the minimum wage uh, in our, uh, we're going to commit to raising the minimum wage in our uh, manifesto. All the people who want to get on in this country and take the issue of unemployment in this country. Remember the 1980s and 1990s. The Tory position was we will just let people stay on the dole. What is the difference between a Labour government and a Tory government? Our job guarantees, which will be at the centre of our manifesto, show what a different philosophy we have. Because we say to the young unemployed, you're not going to be unemployed for more than six months because we will offer you job or a job or training. We say to the long-term unemployed, people unemployed over two years, again, we will offer you a job. And because we are Labour, we believe not just in giving opportunity, but also demanding responsibility as well. So there cannot be a lifetime on benefit. We will make the offer of a job, but at the same time we will say the job will have to be taken. And the other thing that we've learned as we build our economy in the future is that we need to have responsibility all the way up society. And that's why our economy will commit, will commit, will make sure that we don't see a repeat of what we saw during the financial crisis.